Hello everyone. Today we are talking about employees' representations. First of all, what is social dialogue? There are two meanings. The tripartite process, which is between the government, the trade unions, and employers' associations, and the bipartite process, which is between the trade unions and employers' associations. About the tripartite social dialogue, it is promoted by the European Union and also at the national level thanks to the government and its social partners. The bipartite social dialogue is also promoted by the European Union, but more specifically, it is the dialogue between employers' organizations and workers' organizations, and it refers to discussions, consultations, negotiations, and joint actions involving the two sides of an industry. Moreover, the employer representation is composed of a dual channel. The most important rule is that the direct negotiation must not be between the employer and the employee, but it is reserved for the employee's representatives. By calling it a dual channel, it refers to the two types of representatives. The first is the trade union representatives who represent only employees who are members of the trade unions. The second are the elective representatives who represent all of the employees in the workplace. There are two types of employee elective representatives, which both depend on the number of employees an establishment consists of. First is a personal delegate, which is from an establishment consisting of between 30 and 49 employees. Second are work councils, which are for an establishment consisting of at least 50 employees. Let's now talk about the rules that coincide with electing a representative. There are two important ones. The first is that every employee over 16 who has been employed for at least one month has the right to vote. The second is that every employee over 18 who has been employed for at least six months has the right to stand for an election. The main functions of elected representatives are for information and consultation, to negotiate collective bargaining, to monitor employer compliance with employment law, to call and organize strikes, and to denounce the employer before labor courts or labor inspections. The elected representatives are guaranteed certain legal protection. They cannot be unfairly dismissed during their term or for one year after it ends. They also have the right to a hearing during disciplinary proceedings. Lastly, they enjoy the preferential right to stay in their jobs. Employees enjoy the right to join any union. Several unions can exist in one company, so one doesn't necessarily represent the whole workforce. These specific unions are known as a union local or branch. To represent the whole workforce, a union must command a majority of the seats on the council, which is determined by a democratic electoral system. Employees and unions may engage in various union activities in the workplace after three requirements are met. Prior notice to the employer must be given, it must be undertaken during non-working hours, and it may not interfere with the regular conduct of business. Formal collective agreements must take place in accordance with the law. These agreements have general efficacy and bind all employers and employees as if they were the law. Different types of agreements. Sectoral agreements may be negotiated by the most representative unions. An agreement with general efficacy may be negotiated if it represents less than 10% of the employers or it represents any employers in the sector who employ less than 15% of employees within the union. The negotiating committee must be composed of only the bargaining agents as defined by the law. None of these agents can be excluded against its will. In order for the committee to be representative, the law requires that it represent a majority of the employers and employees affected by the negotiation. To be legally valid, agreements must be in writing, then registered with the labor authority, and then it will enter into force on the date set by the agreeing parties. Though it is possible to conclude formal collective agreements at the company level, most employees in Spain are covered by sectoral agreements. Now you know the most important information about employees' representation. Thank you for watching.